All right, so sorry for the weird angle. Um, I don't have my other webcam with me, so we're just using the one on the computer. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about cell transport. Okay, so cell transport itself is an extremely important concept that we have to address in the study of science or in, science, in biology or anatomy or whatever field because the cell is the most basic unit and a lot of the functions that occur within the cell are based on the cell's ability to bring stuff into it or out of it. Okay. And that's dependent upon a lot of reasons, a lot of what it wants to move in, what it wants to get rid of, right? But there are a few things that we need to address just on the general practice of cell transport, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this webcam picture so you can't see me anymore, but now we can address the particular topic of cell transport. Okay, so it begins with the cell membrane. The cell membrane right, is the outermost part of our cell. If it is, you know, if, so all cells have a cell membrane. Not all cells have a cell wall. Like animal cells don't um, have a cell wall. They don't use it for protection. Okay, but the outermost part of a cell that is responsible for bringing in and taking out materials. So if it wasn't for your cell membrane, all right, materials would be going in and out all the time. Okay, but thanks to the cell membrane, we're able to control what goes in and out. So in our cell membrane, it's made up of these unique molecules that are called phospholipids. Okay, because we have these phospholipids, we have an interesting setup. So we have a charged molecule that's here at the top, so it's got a charge to it. All right, and then we have these fatty acid chains that are nonpolar. Okay, so we have a polar charged molecule at the top, nonpolar fatty acid chains, and because of that, what happens is that these things orient in a way that they don't interact with each other. That the polar things who are attracted to other materials, say positive or negatively charged ions that are on the outside of the membrane, these these charged polar ends are going to point to them. All right, and then these nonpolar ends are going to stay away from them, right? Think about oil and water, right? Fatty acid chains, they're not going to want to go towards these charged particles. They're going to go away from it. So because of this unique property of phospholipids, we actually build this thing that we call a phospholipid bilayer. So as a bilayer, bi means two. So this bilayer is actually able to uh, orient itself so that we actually can keep this contained circle, okay, or this contained layer of particular uh, molecules, so at least phospholipids. So with our cell membrane, its main job is to protect the cell. Right, it does this by allowing stuff to go in and out, keeping bacteria out, for example, or viruses out, and make sure that it doesn't uh, affect how the cell functions. It's also really important for cell-to-cell -cell communication. And we'll address that later. Right, when we talk about how cells communicate with each other. Okay. But let's get to the types of transport, really what's important uh, for this particular lecture. So with our types of transport, there are two big categories in which we put transport. Right, and they all do with the movement of molecules. Obviously, because they are transporting. All right, but the, the difference is, in the, is not so much an amount, but what it requires in order to make this happen. It's whether or not there needs to be energy to make it happen or no energy. Okay, so we're going to actually start with this no energy type. Okay, and we call this type of transport passive transport. It's passive because, like a pacifist or anything like that, passive transport is going to be happening where we're not going to actually have any kind of issues with having to take or use energy. So passive transport is no energy, right? and that means that the molecules, whatever the molecule is that you want to move, goes with what we call a concentration gradient. So by saying a concentration gradient, what we mean here is actually just based on the amount that's on either side of the membrane. 
Okay, so if you have a case where you have a bunch of molecules on one side of the membrane, so I'm going to draw these two lines just to represent the bilayer. And we get a different color. And let's say we've got a whole bunch of molecules on the outside of our membrane. All right, let's say the outside. And we have just a few on the inside of our cell. So this is the inside of our cell. Which way do you think the molecules are going to go? They're going to actually move through the membrane towards the side that has the smallest number. Right? So in nature, things like balance. Right? They want it to be even. So the molecules that are on the outside are going to get moved to the inside. Okay, and that's just following this concentration gradient. Right? It's just moving from one side to the next. So because we're following a concentration gradient, we're going to go from high concentration to a low one. Okay, so brackets like this, that is the same as concentration. Okay, so those mean the same thing. So we're always going to move from a high to a low concentration in passive transport. So with passive transport, there are a couple different types that you guys need to know. And those two types uh, all deal with the movement from high to low concentrations. So the first type that we need to address is called diffusion. Diffusion transport is transport from a high to low concentration. So from high concentration to a low concentration right, across the cell membrane. Okay, so this can be for molecules like ions. It can be for um, uh, you know, small things that can get through the membrane. All right, so we'll talk about uh, the sodium and potassium pump when we talk about uh, neuromuscular junctions and things like that uh, with the nervous system. Okay, but it's essentially you're just moving ions from across the membrane from a high concentration to a low concentration. So again, if I draw my membrane, okay, if I've got a whole bunch of ions on one side that are charged, right, if I got a few down here, right, this is going to be, say, if these are sodium ions. All right, we've got a high and low concentration on each side. These positively charged molecules are going to move through the membrane, right, and they're going to even themselves out. Okay, so that's just an example. It doesn't necessarily happen inside the body. All right, so diffusion. The other uh, interesting thing when we have to think about diffusion is that there is a special case of diffusion that deals with water. So water is the most important molecule when it comes to understanding how anything functions with physiology or anything functions with cell biology because everything is dissolved in water. Water is the universal solvent. So because it's that universal solvent, we actually need to understand how it moves. Okay. So this water, it has this special case for water movement is called osmosis. So water will do the same thing. It'll move from a place where there is, say, if you have a membrane and you have a whole bunch of water molecules on one side, all right, those are going to move to where there's lower number of water molecules. So it's going to actually want to come into this particular area. So you're going to move again from a high concentration, always from high to low with diffusion. There's another type of diffusion that uses protein. All right, we call it a protein channel. So if I, again, draw a membrane, okay, so those black lines represent my phospholipid bilayer, all right, occasionally, and in lots of places inside of our membranes, we have these channels that are lined by proteins, okay, so this protein channel, think of it as like a gap in the wall. It's like a doorway. Okay, so imagine if you're trying to move a sofa in through, say, a window versus like a giant entryway. Okay, so it's a lot easier to move that sofa into your apartment or your house if you're going through a larger opening. So the same thing, same idea with this. Because we have these protein channels, we actually are given a larger opening to move material. So since we have a larger area to move material, we can actually then push that material through. So this is for, say, moving like very big molecules like carbohydrates, hormones, 
all of those use these channels. So again, they still function the same way. If I have a whole bunch, let's say these are sugars on the outside of my cell, a few on the inside, they're going to want to move from a high to a low concentration. But instead of going through the membrane, they're actually going to go through this, this particular channel, this protein channel. And so this type of protein, or this diffusion that uses a protein channel, we call it facilitated diffusion. All right, it's facilitated diffusion because it's facilitated or made easier by a protein. So those are the two types of passive transport that I want you to know, and then that special type of diffusion of osmosis. So if you have passive transport, all right, that is moving from a high to low, the big thing to think about this when you take it away is that it uses no energy. Your cells do not have to give up energy to make this happen. It happens on its own. Okay. So that's passive transport. So let's talk about its other types. So we have passive, we also are going to have active transport. Okay, so with active transport, it's again different from passive transport because it uses energy. Okay, because it's using energy, right, it's going to oftentimes go against the concentration gradient. So that's not to mean that there aren't cases where you're going with the concentration gradient from high to low. All right, but active, if you're, say, moving something really, really big, which we'll talk about, but if you're moving from a high to a low concentration, you're probably using passive transport. You're letting nature do its thing where it's trying to balance it out. Active transport, you're going against. So you're oftentimes moving from a low concentration to a high concentration. Again, not always, but most of the time. So with active transport, there are a few different types, again, that you guys are need to know about. All right, so if we've got, again, our cell membrane, Right, and our cell membrane is present. All right, if we've got our protein here in our membrane, oops, here, do you ready to draw this? So we've got our membrane here. All right, what's going to happen with uh, facilitated or with active transport is our membrane proteins, right? This still uses proteins that are in the membrane, okay? But they're oftentimes going to be in responding to some kind of stimulus, right? They're going to have some kind of activity, okay? So if we wanted to use active transport, okay, if we want to use this particular protein channel or protein pump as they're called as one form, all right, what essentially our protein pump is going to do, it's going to react to our substrate and we'll talk about that or you've talked about it or heard about it when we talked about proteins as enzymes or catalysts for reactions. This is the same thing where the protein is reacting to the substrate. So whatever uh, item we want to move across our membrane, it's going to react to that and change shape. So if we have our membrane, right, like our initial setup here, what's going to happen is when we think about our membrane and then we say have these particular molecules, so if this is the inside of the cell and we want to get rid of, say, we made this hormone, we want to get rid of it, it's really big, we need to use energy to move it because it's in a really high concentration inside of our cell. What will happen is that substrate is going to attach to this protein. So when it's in high enough concentration, what's going to occur is that protein channel is going to change shape. Okay, so it's going to actually open up and allow these molecules to start coming into our protein. And then eventually they'll open up and then we'll get our protein uh, completely open and it's going to pump it out right against the concentration gradient. Okay. So active transport using the protein pump is one way. The other way of active transport that you guys need to know about is called bulk transport. So as the name implies, bulk transport is going to move big things. We move large things. Okay, so uh, there are lots of examples in the body where we actually utilize this particular ability for cells to move lots and lots of different things. And it's all dependent upon exactly what type of transport or what we're actually transporting, what material we're moving around. So one type of bulk transport is where we're actually moving fluids. So say we've got a cell that needs to take in a lot of water, okay, or a lot of whatever, 
So whatever substance it is, most of the 99% of the time it's water. So if we want to move fluids in this bulk way, we call it penocytosis. Okay, and what happens is it's our, we've got our cell, so this represents our cell. Okay, and in our cell, let's say it really wants to absorb this chunk of water. Okay, what the cell is going to do is that it's going to move, okay, it's going to actually like change the shape of the membrane in a way that actually allows it to absorb that particular chunk of material. Okay, so we call this cell drinking. And this is pretty common, not so much in our normal body cells. We don't do a lot of penocytosis overall, or when we think about penocytosis, we don't think about it as happening in our body that often. But single cell organisms like amoebas and things, they do this all the time to get materials. All right, the other way is if we're moving uh, solids or other large things. All right, and we call this phagocytosis. Okay. So phagocytosis is the same as the same process, right? But we're instead we're absorbing large molecules, like really big molecules. Or another good example that's if you're talking about the human body is in the immune system. So you guys have probably all seen videos of cells eating other cells. So like our immune cell comes in and eats this bacteria it wants to get rid of and it's going to absorb it okay and it's going to eat it and it's going to be dinner right so to make sure that it doesn't happen uh it doesn't cause infection or have problems later on okay so that's kind of a quick view of the different types of cell transport i'll stop hiding now um so what i want you guys to do after this is make sure that you review this a couple times it should be written in cornell notes method so if you didn't do it the first time you get to watch the video again and do it the right way this time Okay, so go ahead and do this and then you'll have a quiz and a few questions about this particular topic after this video. So go back and review that and make sure that you understand all of these different parts and have all the vocabulary written down. So if you have questions, write those down and let me know. All right, so have fun.